Okay, idle tuning part three of the AMEMS series on how to tune front to back. Last time we left off, um, we had more or less completed uh, the main part of, of our idle tables. Um, now, at, at, at this point um, in the idle, if, um, uh, if, if you're still having, um, you know, re really uh, jumpy issues, uh, you, you, like it, it's still varying, um, you know, 100 to 200 RPM or something like that. Um, as we're doing these final things right here, um, keep a watch on your O2-1 AFRs because as you start targeting these different values and you really start getting it pretty solid, something that will come back and bite you and you're, you're not really paying attention to it um, is your 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 AFR values and we've already set your your uh, your ignition values to where you don't really have to worry about this anymore for, for idle but these fuel values remember how we just this is a very um, ballpark um, fuel map okay so whenever you start um, whenever you really start dialing in your uh, idle <coughs> excuse me um, whenever you really start dialing that in you might need to look at going back in here and as you're um, changing these other values you might need to do little adjustments like this because as you start playing um, you know with 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 engine um, loads these higher and lower loads versus you know the the engine speed um, you, you might run into a spot where you know at 1100 it's fine or 1200 it's fine because your vacuum is actually up here and your fuel value up here is right but when you start going lower in your, or you know, out here is right. So let's say you're targeting, you know, 1150, and um, you know you're up kind of up here in in your fuel map, <coughs> and these values are pretty close. Whenever you start dropping it back down to 700, you know, to like 900s and 1000s, and you start getting down here around negative seven, um, or even sometimes lower than that, negative 10. These are different fuel values, so. While you're playing with all these, keep an eye on those because you might need to go back in and take, you know, add, add a little bit in here and there, and really, you know, to, to fine tune um, these 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 idle values and stuff. These are the little things that will come back and bite you because you start chasing your tail um, and you start trying to get really picky with this stuff. And what happens is, you know, your your stuff in here in your idle is is might be really close. But the problem is, you forget to go back over here in your fuel, and as you're changing those idle values, you forget that this still might need a little bit of adjustment, okay? And keep in mind, O2 feedback control this whole time is off. No feedback control. When we turn this on later, it will help even more with how consistent idle will be. But for now, it's off. Um, <coughs> okay, so back in here to idle. We've covered the idle versus target how much work it takes to reach a certain desired um, uh, idle target. This is like how hard your stepper motor is working or how hard your your uh, your your uh, pulse width motor is, is working. Um, uh, so I anyway, um, and just for, uh, you know, to keep this thing really nice, let's say we've got 850,000 cc injectors and we can comfortably set this to 900 um, and then uh, at you know at operating temperature down here and then let's do everything above f uh, 30 degrees it starts trailing off so everything below 30 we're targeting 1200 so this is all coolant temp so whenever you're colder you're targeting higher values and so from here down to about here which is full operating temperature we're going to select those and we're going to make just a nice little um, you know drop off to where you know you, you don't want steps you know you, you don't you don't you don't want stuff like this it just doesn't make any sense so just you know do a really nice select the furthest endpoints and do a nice sloped line there so whenever your motor's cold it targets a higher value and it keeps things um, you know very consistent and very reliable 
everything that I've told you guys in these videos makes it very reliable, especially this one. You can get super brave. You can run ID 2000s with, um, uh, you know, a, a hyper tuned and a big 102 millimeter and all of this crazy stuff and a crazy ported head, big cams. You can target 750, 800 all you want, and you might get it one day. But a week from now, it's going to fall on its face every single time you're in first and second gear, just you know, putting around the parking lot. It's just not going to happen. If you follow what I'm doing in here, and you know, target realistic values. Don't you know, don't go crazy. If you guys are running big injectors, yes, they're fantastic injectors and, um, you know, they're, they're great to work with, but don't go getting too greedy. It's not worth it. You know, target values that are realistic. You can drive the car day to day to day and you don't have to worry about it dying all the time. You know, so what if it idles at 950 instead of 750? Deal with it. Um, the last few things to do here, um, we've kind of already covered this idle feedback above RPM. Everything above RPM, of everything above 400 RPM, we are now using these maps and these values. Okay, everything below 1700 RPM is using these maps and these values. Okay, everything above 1700, all this stuff is nullified. Doesn't matter. That's why at 1700 here, these are all the same values because none of these really matter. Okay, and then idle on if TP less. Um, those are actually pretty good values. Um, when you start getting into really aggressive setups, you might want to raise those a little bit. Um, uh, and I've even, I haven't had too much difficulty with setting that below the same value as the one above. So if these are the same, if this is set up right and these are all right, this won't make a huge difference, but it is a good idea. It's not going to hurt anything to set that back to one value below to where they're slightly offset. Um, idle feedback minimum. Now, um, let's say uh, you've got this graph right and, and, it's, and it's pretty close. This is the minimum percent that it will pull above, or, or let's say let's say this, below this line right here. It will pull up to 7% below this line to reach a desired target no matter what the coolant temperature. So if your idle, if your idle target is um, you know, a, a thousand, and you're this map from day to day to day to day, you know, two months from now, it's a little off, um, just for temperature and air density and things like that, and things with uh, mechanical things change, this will pull an additional seven, negative seven percent out of this graph to reach your desired target, okay? You don't want to get too crazy with this. You don't want to go doing like, oh, well then, this is all right, so I can set this to negative 30, and you know now it's going to pull 30% and I can set this to you know positive 30 and I can do 30% either way and it's always going to be dead on it's not really how it works unfortunately um, if all of this is right you shouldn't need to do more than say negative um, negative 15% it should be and you can actually hold negative and it'll decrease it so I'll just do that for you guys uh, we'll just do okay negative there and then max we'll do you know 15% okay now <coughs> um, keep in mind that the higher and lower these values are the more work that can be done above and below this so it really you're starting to come down to really fine tuning here um, dead bands uh, negative 50 and um, positive 50 are usually really nice values and what what this is is it tells um, let's say you're targeting uh, a thousand. If it's within a 950 to 1050, plus or minus, you know, on either side of your idle target, is you have a buffering zone of 50 RPM. So it doesn't really start getting super aggressive and start throwing, um, you know, a, a additional um, a duty cycle uh, or, or additional percent to this graph to get it to where you want to be, and it doesn't pull. A lot until you know you get beyond this 50 rpm buffering zone either way okay the gain this is purely dependent on your setup okay um, sometimes you will get the best idle at setting that to zero sometimes it's 0.25 sometimes it's one it that is just it's one of those things where there is no good starting value um, 
in all honesty, set it to zero. Set it to zero, get everything done the way I've showed you here, and then go back and play with that. And if it's if it gets you closer, great. If not, keep it at zero. Feedback rate. <coughs> if this is too low, you'll notice. <coughs> excuse me. Um, you'll notice a really slow response for idle learned value and error duty. It's very slow to respond to a desired idle target. When you move this up, you know you do like 600, you know milliseconds or whatever. It's much more responsive. The thing to watch for is if you get too responsive and you're trying to sample it too fast, it becomes erratic. So your idle starts bouncing up and down. It's doing too much too fast. So you scale it back down to say 400, and it's not near as bouncy. It's it's a it's a little leveler, um, a little more level. Um, so that's um, how that works. Uh, Let's just say we'll set this just to keep things just f so you guys have numbers to play with those and those pretty good idle pulse width max and frequency and output these are only concerning if you have a PWM idle valve okay if you're not using one if you're using a stepper motor these don't mean anything okay um, idle uh, okay idle trims that's ah, way too big uh, let's see here minimum RPM um, let's say you want to turn AC on, uh, it will automatically kick the AC off if it goes below 500 RPM. It kicks it off. It's like, no, idle's way too low. That extra load on the motor is going to kill the motor. It's going to make it stall. So we, it'll kick the AC compressor trigger off below 500. The delay time is how, f okay, so let's say you push the button. If this was at two seconds, from the time you push the button till the time um, it comes off of this additional idle percent okay <clears throat> is two seconds so you push the button it will wait 1000 2000 and then it will uh, drop back down to your idle before this I'm out of time see you in the next one